hello everyone welcome or welcome back to my youtube channel my name is samantha taburamu your nurse educator today we are diving into a topic known as fibroids so we are going to try and break it down for you from what are fibroids who can get fibroids where do they attack or where do they attach and then what are the signs and symptoms what are the diagnosis and treatment options fibroids are non-cancerous tumors masses or growth that normally grow in the uterus of women of reproductive age and these ones vary in size from small to large masses that can distort the uterus so the exact cause of fibroids is not known, but studies show that hormones like estrogen and progesterone normally play a part. Most fibroids happen in women of reproductive age, that is starting from menarche, that is when you see your menstruation, to menopause. Therefore, any woman that has a uterus can easily get fibroids. Now, what are some of the risk factors? What you have to know here is these fibroids are more common in black people than white people for unclear reasons. So we do not know why until now but there is also genetic predisposition where for example in your family if there was a family history of fibroids maybe your mother had fibroids there are high chances that you may also get fibroids and then there is also age fibroids are more common in older women than younger women then also in women who have never given um, birth or had children they are at a risk of getting fibroids. Then also early onset of menstruation. This is because of the presence of the hormones, the estrogen and the progesterone. Because by now I have already told you that the fibroids thrive a lot on these hormones. So these fibroids can develop within the walls of the uterus. They can develop um, in the main cavity of the uterus and also the outer surface of the uterus. There are different types of fibroids depending on where they are located and where they attach intramural fibroids these fibroids are embedded in the muscle wall of the uterus and these are the most common submucosal fibroids these type of fibroids grow um, under the inner lining of the uterus so for them they're normally in the main cavity and then we have the subterrestrial fibroids this type of fibroids grow under the lining of the outer surface of the uterus they can become quite large and grow into the pelvis the subserosa and then we have the pedunculated fibroids this is the least common type these fibroids attach to the uterus with a stalk or a stem so they are often um, described as a mushroom like because they have like a whole stem that attaches onto the uterus and they have like a wider top when it comes to the signs and symptoms they vary some women may present with the signs and symptoms some women may not but what are the signs and symptoms of fibroids the first one is pelvic pressure when these fibroids are growing and enlarging that is when people will experience that pelvic pressure and some people may also complain a little bit of lower back pain then there is also heavy menstrual bleeding now this can be irregular and painful women will experience cramps so you have to differentiate is it just cramps or cramps caused by something else and if you also notice that there is bleeding in between your periods you are it's not yet your time to go into your menstruation but you're seeing some little bit of bleeding please go to the hospital and consult with your gynecologist as soon as possible and then another thing is um enlargement or distension of the abdomen this is a common sign you will normally see that the women look pregnant but you have to keep in mind that when these fibroids are growing and enlarging they may put pressure onto the bladder and when they put pressure onto the bladder you will go to the toilet more frequently to like there is that frequent urination that you'll experience on top of the frequent urination you'll also have difficulty emptying your bladder because something is pressing onto your what your bladder also when this fiber is grow backwards and put that pressure onto the rectum you may go to the toilet and have difficulties passing fecal matter and on top of that you may also experience constipation then some women also have reported and um, painful sexual intercourse then also some have talked about um, a feeling of fullness or what people can call bloating effects on pregnancy normally fibroids do not cause any problem for mothers during pregnancy most of these asymptomatic fibroids are normally found in pregnant mothers when they come to do the ultrasounds that is how they are found the baby is there and also the fibroids are there so for me i feel like a mother can conceive can carry their baby to term and they can deliver their baby with their fibroids in because some women may not have any issues with the fibroids however some may have 
excessive or even complications with the fibroid skin. Here, me, the only problem I'm seeing during pregnancy is the size of the fibroid affecting the baby. Because if the baby has implanted itself, the baby is growing, and maybe there is also a fibroid in the in the main cavity of the uterus. That fibroid, if it's growing, it's going to start competing with the baby. They're going to be like practically twins competing for the resources available. So some mothers experience preterm deliveries and also recurrent miscarriages. So the baby and the fibroid are going to be competing for the resources that are available there. The nutrients and food, blood supply, and space because as the baby is growing, also the fib also the fibroid is growing. So the baby is going to experience intrauterine growth restrictions and they may be born with low birth weight because they have not been getting enough nutrients enough space to grow enough blood supply that is what is going to happen during pregnancy so make sure that you go for your antenatal care make sure that your gynecologist is seeing you go for those follow-ups like do consultations because effect on pregnancy that is my take it's more of the size of the fibroid when it comes to fertility, there is a small link, but it is more of where is the fibroid located. So let us look at the submucosa. This one normally attaches itself in the inner lining of the, of the uterus. So it's normally here. They are normally inside here, all that stuff. So if, for example, um, sperm comes in and then there is fertilization and it wants to implant itself and it finds a fibroid here, there's going to be difficult in implantation or it comes and it wants to implant itself here there's a fibroid there ah it went here there's a fibroid there so there's going to be difficult in, in in implantation that is the first thing so the location of the fibroid is the one that um creates this um problem with the fertility then also if there is a fibroid for example here the sperm will not be able to enter here for fertilization you're getting it then also all this might be clear but maybe this the fibroid is located here at the inch of the fallopian tube hmm? here maybe also here that means that yes if the if the sperm is um able to enter inside here it will not be able to go this side to meet with the what to meet with the egg so fertilization is not going to take place so the location is the one that normally affects your fertilization. For me, that is the link I can say here. So when it comes to diagnosis of the fibroid, there is normally pelvic examination. Then there is ultrasound. This is the most common because it's used to visualize the fibroids. And then there is the MRI, the magnetic resonance imaging. It gives detailed images of the fibroids location and the size. When it comes to the treatment of fibroids, it is normally about the size and the location of the fibroids. So, piece of advice to women, if you have been checked and they told you that you have fibroids, but these fibroids are not causing any pain, they are not affecting your day-to-day -day life, you're not bleeding, you don't have anemia and all those signs that are coming with the fibroids, you do not have those symptoms, please leave these fibroids alone. So, these fibroids, when you go through menopause, they normally shrink and go away on their own because the hormonal levels have decreased in the body the estrogen and the progesterone so if these fibroids are not causing any problem to you leave them alone we go to the medical management of fibroids so fibroids can also be reduced using medications for example the gonadotropin releasing hormones agonists like the lupron this treatment takes three to six months and it is normally a short term due to the potential side effects like the bone Thinning. Then also other treatments like the oral contraception or the birth control pills. These ones help to relieve the symptoms, especially the heavy menstrual bleeding. So if you have heavy menstrual bleeding and you have fibroids, they normally give you oral contraceptive pills. But the oral contraceptive method does not shrink the fibroids. They just relieve the symptoms. And another thing I've already talked about this, the choice of... um. Medication depends on the size of the fibroids and also the patient or the woman. So every patient has a tailored health plan for them. So before doing anything or planning on doing anything, make sure that you go to your healthcare provider and have your consultation and have the right management for you as an individual. And then we go to the surgical management of fibroids. The first one is the uterine artery. 
embolization. With the UAE, they normally cut off blood supply to the fibers, shrinking them. Now, this is more of a procedure than surgery, honestly. So if you want to preserve your fertility, meaning that you want to become pregnant again and have children, I wouldn't recommend you to do this procedure. However, if you go forward with the procedure, make sure that you speak with your gynecologist and have a reliable form of birth control because there are serious complications that can come with pregnancy after you have done this procedure. And then there is myomectomy. This is the surgical removal of the fibroid. This is normally done for women who are having difficulties with um, conceiving, who are having recurrent miscarriages and are interested in their fertility. So myomectomy is done. And then we have hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is the complete removal of the uterus. So this is the definitive cure of fibroids. If you do not have a uterus, where will the fibroids grow? So I really do not blame women who go for hysterectomy and have their uterus removed because you do not know what a person go through. Honestly, if a person is having those severe symptoms, they are bleeding heavily, they are having anemia, they are dizzy, they don't have a social life, they have um, pelvic um, pressure, they have pain, they have problems with, they're always going to the toilet urinating. You people, people go through a lot of things. So me right now, I feel like if you've sat with your gynecologist and you feel like this is the right procedure for you, this is the right medical plan for you, you both of you agree, do you? If something makes you happy, if you feel like this is good for me, do you. Other than that, thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful and informative, do not forget to share. I'll see you in the next discussion.